Hey everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Uh, here's an integral I got off the channel, Maths 505. I think he posted it not too long ago, maybe a few hours. Um, I didn't watch his video yet. Uh, there was nothing in, uh, in the uh, thumbnail to suggest that he was going to use Feynman integration, so I assume he didn't. Um, he usually doesn't do that unless uh, he puts like a picture of Richard Feynman next to it. <clears throat> but anyway, I'm going to solve it with Feynman integration. And the process goes like this. Um, of course, we're going to break out Euler's formula that uh, e to the i x equals cosine x plus i sine x, allowing us to rewrite this as the real part of the integral from 0 to infinity of x e to the i x over e to the x minus 1 dx. Uh, and we'll notice that e to the i x is simply e to the x raised to the i power. Uh, and then we'll make the substitution that u is equal to e to the x or natural log u is equal to x, uh, implying that um, 1 over u du equals dx. Um, uh, performing that substitution, we get that i is equal to the real part of the integral from, let's see, uh, natural log infinity is infinity, natural log 0 is 1, x is natural log u, e to the x is, um, is u, so we have u to the i, I'll write that in front, u to the i, natural log u um, over, let's see, uh, u minus 1, and then we have 1 over u du, like that. Now we'll also make the substitution that uh, u is equal to 1 over w, or, d, or du is equal to negative 1 over w squared dw. All right, so that's going to give us the real part of the integral from, uh, let's see, 1 over infinity is 0, 1 over 1 is 1. u to the i would become 1 over w, all raised to the i. Natural log u would become natural log 1 over w, and we would have over 1 over w minus 1 times 1 over w times negative 1 over w squared dw. Let's simplify this a little bit. We'll use this negative sign right here to make this a natural log w. If you're familiar with uh, properties of natural logs, that should be no problem for you. Let's make this a, uh, in, inside the parentheses, this would be a w to the negative 1, making this a w to the negative i w to the negative i. Uh, we'll use one of these w's right here to cancel that, that 1 over w right there. We'll distribute this w in here to make this a 1 minus w. 1 minus w, and we are done with this part. And we simply have the w, and then we will... Uh, Put a negative sign in front there and switch the bounds of integration. All right. So all in all, this means that I is equal to the negative of the real part of the integral from 0 to 1 of... I'm going to switch. Uh, I'm going to bring W back to X just to make it, I don't know, more familiar. X to the negative I natural log x over 1 minus x dx. All right. So there's our uh, final representation for i. Um, we just did a lot of work and basically got almost nowhere. Uh, we just rewrote our original integral um, in a way that looks a lot worse than we started with, but this is actually going to help us. 
So I'm going to erase everything except for what we started with and where we're at now. We don't even need Euler's formula up here anymore. And in fact, I'm just going to put a equal sign negative real part integral 0 to 1 x to the i natural log x over 1 minus x dx and uh we don't need this anymore we can use this for side notes all right where do we go from here well um we're now now we're going to start using Feynman integration so the first step in Feynman integration is usually to create a function in terms of a new variable on this channel, that variable is t. So let's let f of t equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t over 1 minus x dx, which implies that f prime of t will be equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t natural log x over 1 minus x dx and furthermore we can see that if we take the negative of the real part of f prime evaluated at negative i will recover the value of our original integral see if we evaluate this this is f prime of t f prime at negative i would put a negative i right there then we'd almost have this we just need to take the negative real part of it to get back our original integral so just we'll keep that in mind for later so we have this is f of t um well let's recall this that uh the sum as some integer n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n that is equal to one over one minus x on the interval x is negative one to one all right um so let's uh, substitute this in for our 1 over x in our f of t. So that'll give us f of t is equal to the integral from 0 to 1 of x to the t times the sum. n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the n dx. All right. Um, let's bring this x to the t inside the sum as an addition onto this n and the exponent on x n plus t and then dx um, we'll use fubini's theorem to uh, switch the integration and summation notations it's valid in this case um, integral zero to one and then the sum as n goes from zero to infinity this is an easy integral to evaluate. This will evaluate to 1 over n plus t plus 1. 1 over n plus t plus 1. Uh, and then uh, let's go ahead and do this trick. We're going to add 1 to our n uh, on our index and subtract 1 from our n inside the sum. So that'll just get rid of that plus one. All right, so there's our f of t. Uh, this actually doesn't converge, but we're not interested in this sum. We're interested in the derivative of it. So this implies that f prime of t is equal to the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of, let's see, we're going to get a negative sign there, one over n plus t all squared. Okay, great. Um, oh, sorry, this is actually n going from 1 to infinity. All right, so now we have our f prime of t. All we need to do is take the negative real part of this thing evaluated at i, and we have our original integral. So we will say that i is equal to the negative of the real part of this thing. Well, there's a negative sign there, so we'll just get rid of the negative sign. Uh, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n i, this t is negative i, don't forget, negative i all squared. Okay, um, 
that's not nice. So let's uh, multiply the, um, and then I make a mistake somewhere. Nope, nope. Multiply the top and the bottom by uh, the conjugate of this part, n, uh, n minus i, which would be n plus i, but all squared. So we're going to multiply this by n plus i all squared over n plus i all squared. And this is going to equal the real part of the sum. n goes from 1 to infinity of, well, let's see. The whole point was so that we'd get something real in the denominator, and that's going to be, let's see, n squared minus i squared, or just n plus 1 n squared plus 1, all squared, right? Yeah, n squared minus i squared, n squared plus 1, all squared, and then over n plus i, all squared. Well, what happens if we foil this part out? We will get an n squared plus 2i n minus 1. So this will go here. So let's erase this. And we're just left with n squared. But don't forget we're taking the real part of it. So this 2in is going to drop out. And we're just left with minus 1. And this is as far as I would like to go with that problem. Uh, this looks like there's probably some sort of strange uh, way to express this, uh, not as a sum. Maybe, uh, I don't know. Um, like I said, I haven't watched Math's, Math uh, 505's video on this. He probably has a better way to express that. Um, I'll admit he, his knowledge is a little bit, yeah, a little bit greater than mine. Um, but uh, I, I think this is this is pretty good. You know, you know me. I like to express. Uh, I, I think expressing my answer in terms of an infinite sum is pretty good. Um, it looks like this would this would actually. You'd have to add up quite a few terms of that before you actually got to the true value of that integral. But you know what? I mean. You could do it. All it is is arithmetic. It's literally just arithmetic. Um, and you would end up getting a, uh, you know, a value that's fairly close to the true value of that integral. So there you go. There's my answer to that. I uh, hope you enjoyed that.